Dear students, today I would like to talk about the development of the vessels, the development of the arteries and the development of the veins. And this is the continuation of the lecture about the heart development. And here we can finish the development of the cardiovascular system. Let's see the schedule of this lecture. First, I will tell you some words about the vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. We also heard it in a lecture of the heart development. We will start uh, with the same theory. And after we will talk about the development of the venous system, we will see the malformations of the venous system. After we will continue the development of the arteries, the pharyngeal arteries, and finally, we will see the malformations of the arteries. So this is the schedule of this presentation today. Let's see the first point, the vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. I started this with this, the earlier presentation about the heart development. Here you can see the blood islands. The blood islands, they are located uh, in the mesoderm surrounding the wall of the yolk sac and here you can see the cells the mesoderm cells and the growth factor the fibroblast growth fat factor can help in the differentiation of these cells from these cells will develop the hemangioblasts and here we have to mention another factor, which is the vascular endothelial growth factor, which is also really important in the development of the vessels. From this hemangioblast, we'll develop two different cell types. The outer angioblasts will form the endothelial cells of the vessels. And there, here you can see the hemopoietic stem cells, from these cells will develop the cells, the blood cells. The angiogenesis, what is the definition of the angiogenesis? So after the vascular genesis, vessels will sprout from these existing, existing vessels. This is the angiogenesis. The main vessels, the aorta, ventral dorsal aorta, pharyngeal arteries, they develop with vascular genesis and all of the smaller branches, they will develop with angiogenesis. Let's see this procedure in this video. Here you can see the embryo, the ectoderm, the endoderm and the mesoderm. The cardiogenic field is inside and here you can see the special cells which will form the angiogenic clusters. And from the cells, will develop the two different cell types. One which will form the wall of the vessels. And these are the innermost cells. They will form the cells uh, of the blood. So endothelial cells and the primitive blood cells you can see in the picture. And this is the superior view of the embryo. We can see the blood island, the heart portion. That is what we saw in the heart development. So let's see now the development of the veins, the venous system. First, I would like to repeat with you the development of the sinus venosus, which is the proximal part of the primitive heart tube. After we will see the main veins of the embryo, the development of the cardinal veins, the vital line and umbilical veins. And finally, we will talk about the supracardinal, the sub and the sacrocardinal venous system. Let's see now the first point. But before we are talking about the development of the sinus venosus, I would like to repeat the uh, parts of the primitive heart tube. I told you that this is a really important slide. If you have question about the heart development in the exam, of course, you have to start with this, with the description of the primitive heart tube. Let's say that. I hope you remember. 
the first, the venous part, if you start from the venous part, there you can see the sinus venosus. After the common atrium, we know that from the sinus venosus will originate the smooth part of the uh, atrium. After from the common atrium will be the proper atrium, the auricles. Here you can see the ventricle. From the primitive ventricle will be the left ventricle. And after the bulbus cordis is visible, it has three main parts. From this part will develop the trabeculated part of the right ventricle. From the part number two will originate the outflow parts of the ventricle. This was the conus cordis. And finally, here you can see the truncus arteriosus. From this part will develop the aorta and the pulmonary trunk with the help of the uh, septum, aortic pulmonary septum. So let's see now the embryo. This is uh, uh, first the fourth week. We have to know that these veins, these are paired uh, veins first. What are the veins what we can see here? The first is the cardinal vein, the anterior cardinal vein. Here you can see the posterior cardinal vein. It will drain the posterior part of the embryo and the anterior cardinal vein will collect the venous blood from the uh, cranial portion. After they will fuse, and they will form the common cardinal vein, which will drain to the sinus uh, horn. And after the next one, here you can see the other vein, which will drain the yolk sac. This is called the vitaline vein or omphalomesenteric vein. And finally, the third one is the umbilical vein, which will bring the oxygenated blood from the placenta. So these are the three main veins at the beginning of the development. And if we see the developing heart from the posterior view, uh, it's visible that the two sinus horns, one in the right side and one in the left side, will drain uh, to uh, the venous part of the primitive heart to the uh, primitive atria. Here you can see the main veins, what I listed before, the anterior cardinal vein, posterior cardinal vein, and the common cardinal vein. They open to the sinus horns. Here we can see the umbilical veins in the left side and the right side. And finally, this one is the vitaline vein also in the right side and the left side. Let's see the development. During the development of the venous system, I told you earlier that first it is uh, symmetrical, but during the development, the venous system will shift from the left side to the right side. And that's why we can see uh, differences or developmental changes which is visible that a lot of veins will be closed during the development. If you see here, there in the left side, the uh, cardinal veins, they are closed. Also, you can see that there in the left side, the proximal part of the umbilical vein and the vitaline vein. And here you can see in the right side that the posterior uh, cardinal vein and the right umbilical vein, they are also closed uh, in, uh, during the development. What will be from the different parts? Uh, from the left sinus horn of the sinus venosus will be the coronary sinus, you know, the main vein of the heart, and the oblique vein of the uh, left atrium, that is what Professor Gossner mentioned in the anatomy lecture too. After, 
what will be from the cardinal vein, from the common cardinal vein and the uh, portion of the uh, anterior cardinal vein, here will be the superior vena cava. And from the right vitaline vein will be the inferior vena cava. This is what you can see in this picture. And I hope you remember, because I told you during the development of the heart, that during this shift from the left side to the right side, one part of the sinus horn will fuse to the cavity of the right atrium and will form the smooth part of the right atrium, which is called the sinus venarum cavarum. Here you can see almost the final position of the veins. So from the right anterior cardinal vein and the common cardinal vein will be the right brachiocephalic vein and the superior vena cava. From the left cardinal vein will be the left brachiocephalic vein. So this communication between the left and right side here, I told you that the venous uh, circulation will drain from the left side to the right side. So the left brachiocephalic vein, that's why it is longer compared to the right one. From the proximal part of the left posterior cardinal vein will be the left superior intercostal vein, which will collect the venous blood from the upper two intercostal segments. This is the left superior intercostal vein. Let's see now the development of this in the video. Here you can see the sinus horns, the cardinal vein, umbilical vein, and vitaline veins are visible here. During the development, the vessels are closed, what I told you, the cardinal, umbilical, vitaline in that part, and the cardinal and the umbilical in the right side. Here you can see they are obliterated. From the left side will be only just the coronary sinus and the oblique vein of the left atrium. And from the right side will be the superior vena cava from the cardinal, and the inferior vena cava from the vitaline veins. I would like to continue the description of the other veins, the vitaline and the umbilical vein development. Here you can see again the primitive heart, but now please take care because now we have an anterior view. So this is here the right side and this is the left side. Now, you can see that around the developing liver bud, which will originate from the endoderm, around them we can see the left and right vitaline veins, which will penetrate through the developing liver, which will go toward the uh, septum transversum. And also, you can see here the two umbilical veins in the right side and the left side. What's happening after? This liver bud, what I told you, it is growing and penetrating into the septum transversum and the vitaline veins, they will go through this developing liver bud and they will form the hepatic sinuses you know, the sinuses of the liver. Around the developing liver, we can see the umbilical veins. And these umbilical veins, they have connection with the uh, hepatic sinuses. Here you can see the connection of them. And during the development, the proximal part of the umbilical vein here in the right side and the left side, they are closed. After, we can see also the closure of the left part, left proximal part of the levitaline vein. And only just in the right side will be the connection 
between the vitelline veins and the sinus horn. And this is called the right hepatocardinal channel. From this will be the hepatic part of the inferior vena cava. So we are here now. What is the next uh, step? Here you can see that, that the umbilical veins, they have connection with the hepatic sinuses. And we know that with the umbilical veins will go the oxygenated blood from the placenta. And that's why we'll develop a direct connection between the umbilical vein and the right sinus horn. And this direct uh, connection is called the ductus venosus. Why is it important? Because this is the way how the oxygenated blood will reach the heart um, in a direct way. So here you can see that from the distal part of the vitelline vein will uh, be a plexus around the duodenum and the left part of it will be closed and also the right uh, umbilical vein. And here you can see the final uh, picture of the venous system. What are those? So from the hepatocardinal uh, portion will be the hepatic part of the inferior vena cava. The ductus venosus, of course, it will be closed after the birth. And from this will be the ligamentum venosum. This is what you heard during the description of the anatomy of the liver. After, from the vitelline veins, from the right vitelline vein, will be the portal vein, the, spleni uh, the splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein, the portal system. And of course, the umbilical vein will be closed also after the birth. And from this will be the ligamentum teres hepatis, the round ligament of the liver, which will form connection between the liver and the anterior body wall. So here you can see all of these ways. Let's see this in the video. Here is the developing uh, liver pod around the vitelline veins and the umbilical veins are visible. The developing liver, these are the sinuses there. The proximal part of the umbilical veins are closed. Here you can see the ductus venosus. From the distal part of the vitelline vein we will develop the portal system and here you can see the left umbilical vein which will be closed. After uh, this, after the fourth week, during the fifth, seventh week, we need other additional uh, veins because you saw that the vitan line veins, the umbilical veins and the posterior, because of the po closure of the posterior cardinal veins, we need other venous systems which will uh, drain the body wall, the organs of the abdominal cavity and the lower extremities. So that's why we'll develop other new venous systems like the supracardinal veins, the subcardinal and sacrocardinal veins. They will drain the body wall, the kidney and the uh, gonades and the lower extremities. Let's see now, this is in the schematic picture. I told you these three ones. The subcardinal veins, here you can see them in a gray, a gray I mean green uh, uh, color. This is the venous drainage of the kidney and the conate. The supracardinal veins, you can see there in the posterior body wall. They will drain the body wall by in the way of the intercostal veins. And finally, the sacrocardinal veins, they are here in the pelvic region. They will drain the lower extremities. So let's see these systems, the venous systems. 
First, I would like to tell you some words about the cardinal veins, like a repetition of the first part. Here you can see the schematic picture of the development of the cardinal veins. The, here is the right side, here is the left side, so we see everything from the anterior view. From the right anterior cardinal vein will be the internal jugular vein and the right brachiocephalic vein and the little part of the superior vena cava. From the left uh, cardinal veins will be the internal jugular vein and because it will be closed, only just a little vein, the oblique vein of the left atrium. And if we see the common cardinal veins, from the common cardinal veins in the right side will be the superior vena cava. And I showed you before at the beginning of the lecture that from the left common uh, cardinal vein will be the coronary sinus of the heart. Let's see now what will be from the posterior cardinal veins. The posterior cardinal veins, they will be closed. That's why only just from the proximal part will be in the right side the azygous vein, which will drain to the superior vena cava. And in the left side, this uh, left superior intercostal vein, which will drain the first two intercostal spaces. I think now you can recognize them that very important is the anatomical knowledge for this development of questions. So I would like to recommend you again to learn parallelly the anatomy and the embryology because you can see here very well that the anatomical knowledge it is really important for that to understand the development of the vessels. Finally, I would like to uh, show you this. I told you that we will develop the communication between the left side and the right side because the venous circulation will shunt from the left side to the right side. So this communication between the right and the left cardinal veins will be the left brachiocephalic vein. Let's continue with this uh, description of the supracardinal veins. I told you that the supracardinal veins will form the venous system of the body wall. I hope you know, you remember that these are the zygous veins in uh, the thoracic cavity and the ascending lumbar veins in the abdominal cavity. So here you can see what are the vessels which will develop from this. So from the supracardinal veins, in the right side will be the azygous vein. From the left side will be the hemiazygous vein. Here you can see the connection between the left side and the right side uh, at the level of the seventh uh, thoracic vertebra here. And there from the uh, from this side, from the left side, from the upper part, will be the accessory hem hemiozygous vein, which will collect the venous blood of the upper left part of the thoracic wall. And uh, just it is a repetition that those veins which will drain the upper two intersegment, intercostal segment space, this is the left superior intercostal vein. This is uh, these veins. This uh, vein will develop from the uh, left posterior cardinal vein. Let's continue. The description of the sub and sacrocardinal veins. From this system will be the veins of the kidney and the main parts of the inferior vena cava, the veins of the gonates, and the veins of the lower extremity. You will see these vessels during the dissection of the retroperitoneum. So what will be from those vessels? Um, uh, before we start a description of that, I would like to repeat with you that the, uh, 
hepatic segment of the inferior vena cava will be from the vitaline veins. So that's why we can talk about renal segment and sacral segment, which will develop from the sub and sacrocardinal veins. So let's see first the subcardinal vein si venous system. From the right side will be the here you see the inferior, the renal segment of the inferior vena cava. And as you can see here very well, that the veins, they are closed there in the left side, because the venous drainage will shift from the left to the right. So from the lower part of the left system, and of course from the distal part of the right subcardinal vein, will be the gonadal veins. And finally, here you can see the connection shunned from the uh, left side to the right side. This will be the left renal vein. We can see the same uh, development in case of the sacrocardinal veins. You can see that from the sacrocardinal veins, will develop a system, but there we have a closure in the left side. So the left will shunt to the right side in a similar system like this in the subcardinal veins. And from the right side will be the sacrocardinal segment of the inferior vena cava and the proximal part of the common uh, iliac vein. And there is the iliac vein there in the left side. And the left common iliac vein will develop from this connection because of the shunt of the venous system from the left side to the right side. Of course, these developmental uh, characteristics, they will be very important in the development of different disorders. Because if we see the venous drainage of the gonades, for example, the testis, you see that the, here, the gonadal vein uh, in the right side, it will drain into directly the inferior vena cava, but the vein, the gonadal vein in the left side, it will drain first to the left renal vein and after into the inferior vena cava. And of course, because of this difference, the uh, passage or the venous drainage, it is much more uh, active or um, here we have a bigger withdrawal effect in the right side because of the inferior vena cava. So there in the left side, varicosity could be developed much more frequently compared to the right, right side. And this disorder is called the varicocele. And here you can see that behind this disorder, we can see the development, developmental, cause developmental uh, uh, differences between the subcardinal veins in the right side and the left side. And here is the final picture. Here you can see the different system from the sacro cardinal part will be the veins of the pelvis, the lower extremity, from the sub-cardinal veins, the renal veins, the gonadal veins. Here you can see this hepatic segment, which is from the vitaline vein, and the supracardinal system will be the azygous and hemiazygous. And here you can see those veins which will develop from the cardinal veins. And let's see this whole development in the video. At the beginning of the development, you see that all of these systems, they are symmetrical. First, we'll develop the cardinal system. And after the closure of the posterior cardinal veins, new and new uh, cardinal veins will develop like the subcardinal vein, the supracardinal veins, 
and the sacral cardinal veins. Here you can see that we will have a lot of anastomosis between the venous systems, but during the development, the veins will drain from the left side to the right side, a lot of, lot of vessels will be closed, and here you see the inferior vena cava, which has a hepatic segment, renal segment, sacral part, will be in the right side. And these are the systems, cardinal, supracardinal, subcardinal, and the sacral <coughs> cardinal veins. After the detailed description of the development of the veins, <coughs> I would like to show you some developmental malformations. What are those? Uh, during the development of the cardinal veins, we could have abnormalities. In this case, what you can see, the superior vena cava is located in the left side. Here we have an anastomosis between the right side <coughs> and the left side, and the blood will go through, will drain through the coronary sinus to the right atrium. So this is the left superior vena cava. If we have no this anastomosis between the cardinal veins, <coughs> after we have a superior vena cava in the right side and the superior vena cava also in the left side, and from the left side through the coronary sinus, the blood will drain to the right atrium. This is called the double superior vena cava. We can uh, describe uh, developmental malformations during the development of the inferior vena cava and the retroperitoneal veins. Here you can see that, that the left sacrocardinal vein does not disappear. That's why in the retroperitoneum we can see two uh, vessels. It is a double, it's called double inferior vena cava. And if the uh, subcardinal vein will drain directly, not to the uh, hepatic segment of the inferior vena cava and the heart, and it drains directly to the supracardinal veins, the azygous system into the heart. In this case, we see that we have an absent in the whole inferior vena cava. This is the abnormal connection. Here you can see the venous blood does not go through the uh, liver. It will go into the inferior vena cava. It will go directly to the supracardinal veins and after to the superior vena cava. In the last part of my presentation, I would like to show you the development of the arteries. The development of the arterial system, I will tell you, of course, the development of the vitelline vein, I mean, vitelline arteries, umbilical arteries, and the branches of the dorsal aorta. So let's see that. Here is the primitive heart tube. There you can see the arterial end, the truncus arteriosus. From the distal part of the truncus arteriosus will develop the aortic sac. And like a fontanelle, from the aortic sac will develop the pharyngeal arteries, the arteries of the pharyngeal arches, which will go and drain to the dorsal aorta. Here you can see the schematic picture from the developing embryo and the pharyngeal arches, they are visible on this picture. First we can talk about six pharyngeal arches, but during the development the fifth one will disappear. But that's why we have only just um, uh, five ones in the other, in the later stages. And you can see that all of the pharyngeal arches, they have an individual nerve, one artery and one vein too. It is uh, 
really important to understand that the development of the vessels of the arteries of the pharyngeal arches, uh, it is not um, similar, it, these are not in the same time. First, here you can see that from the distal part of the truncus arteriosus will be the aortic sac, and the first two pharyngeal arches, the arteries of the first two pharyngeal arches will develop. And after these first uh, arteries, they will disappear. Yeah, this is what I told you. And the third, the fourth, and the sixth artery will develop. So this is only just a schematic picture there, but we have no this situation when we can see all of the pharyngeal arteries within the same time. I told you that too, that the fifth one will disappear. So that's why we will describe only just the development of the first, second, third, fourth, and the sixth pharyngeal arch. Let's see now what's happening during the development. You can see that during the development will be the different arteries. And if we see the final position, in that picture, I can tell you what are the vessels and the different parts of the arterial systems, system which will develop from the different parts there. What will be from the outflow part from the truncus arteriosus of the primitive heart tube? From the truncus arteriosus, which is a light blue there, from this, of course, we know very well will be the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. From the most distal part, which is the aortic sac, from this will be the proximal part of the aortic arch until the origin of the left common carotid artery. And here you can see that from uh, this part, from the right side, will be the brachiocephalic trunk, the brachiocephalic artery there. After, we can talk about the first arch and the second arch. They will disappear, what I told you. From the first arch will be the maxillary artery, and from the second arch will be the hyoid and the stapedial arteries. And what we can see here in the final picture, these are derivatives of the third arch. From the third pharyngeal artery, we'll develop the right and the left uh, common carotid artery and the proximal part of the internal carotid artery. The distal part of the internal carotid artery will be from the dorsal aorta, which are paired here first, and only just after they will fuse and they will form one common dorsal artery in the lower part. So this, the distal part, will be from the dorsal aorta. Let's see now the fourth one. From the fourth arch in the left side, it will be one part of the aortic arch, which will be between the common carotid artery and the left subclavian artery. And in the right side, you can see the proximal part of the right subclavian artery. Here it is very visible in this picture. And if you see the continuation of the right subclavian, what are the vessels which will form the right subclavian? The other part, the distal part of the right subclavian will be also from the dorsal aorta. And here you can see the seventh intersegmental artery will form the continuation of the right subclavian artery. And during the development, this connection between the, the dorsal 
arte there it will be closed and that's why we have no this additional connection let's see now the sixth one finally because i told you that the fifth will disappear from the sixth arch will be the truncus uh, the pulmonary trunk the truncus pulmonalis and from this will develop the pul pulmonary arteries in the right side we have no connection here but there you can see in the left side we have a connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta it has really important function during the embryological life this connection it is the ligamentum arteriosum will be ligamentum because it will be closed after the birth i hope you remember it is really important for that because we have no circulation in the lung during the embryological life so that's why the arterial blood will uh, go from the pulmonary trunk directly to the aorta here you can see also a closure in the dorsal dorsal aorta which are between the third and the fourth arches and also this uh, connection will be closed which is between the two dorsal aorta there and finally if we understand the development of the pharyngeal uh, arteries after we know very well why do we have differences between the recurrent laryngeal nerves in the right side and the left side of the thoracic cavity here you can see that that the right and the left vagus nerve will run parallelly with these vessels and the recurrent laryngeal nerve will turn back around the sixth arch first but we know that here the connection between the sixth pharyngeal arch and the dorsal aorta will dis disappear in the right side so this nerve will go upward until the fourth arch from where develop the subclavian artery but there in the left side this connection will remain this is the ductus arteriosus and there will be the ligamentum arteriosum later so the recurrent laryngeal nerve will go around this ligament that's why we can find the recurrent laryngeal nerve around the aortic arch in the left side and around the subclavian artery in the right side let's say this in a widow here we can see the primitive heart tube the arterial part of it the aortic sac the first and second pharyngeal arches after the third the fourth and the sixth arches and during the development because of the folding and the growing of the different organs you can see the final position this is from the distal part this is from the aortic sac the red is the third arch the yellow the fourth and the sixth one is a pulmonary if we see the development of the recurrent laryngeal nerve the recurrent laryngeal nerves first will go around the sixth uh, aortic arch here this connection will disappear so the recurrent laryngeal nerve will go upward until the fourth one from this will develop the subclavian artery in the right side but there in the left side we can see the connection between the pulmonary trunk and aorta 
And finally, I would like to tell you some words about the development of the vitaline vein and umbilical, uh, vitaline arteries and umbilical arteries. From the vitaline uh, artery will be the arteries of the GA tract, the celiac artery and the superior mesenteric artery. And from the umbilical arteries will be the inferior mesenteric artery. And here you can see the other arteries, which will be from this, the uh, iliac, internal iliac, and there you can see the umbilical artery. From the proximal part of the umbilical artery will be the superior vesical arteries. We know that the umbilical artery will go into the anterior body wall and will form the medial umbilical fold, but after it will close and will form the umbilical ligament. From the dorsal aorta, here you can see we can distinguish different branches. The dorsal lateral branches of the dorsal aorta will form the vertebral arteries, intercostal arteries. From the ventral segments will develop those which will be in the unpaired branch of the dorsal aorta, the celiac trunk, the superior inferior mesenteric arteries, and the lateral segments will form the paired branches of the aorta, the suprarenal, the renal, and the gonadal arteries. And here you can see those vessels which will form the main arteries of the upper and the lower limbs, the seventh intersegmental artery, the subclavian artery in the upper extremity, and the common iliac artery from the uh, initial segment of the umbilical artery will form the artery of the lower extremity. And finally, uh, only just a few words about the developmental malformations. One of the most frequent malformations is that when this communication, what we have between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, this uh, duct is not closed. This is called the patent ductus arteriosus. We could develop a, a closure or narrowing there within the lumen of the aorta. In front of this duct, and after this duct, we can talk about corrugation of the aorta in a preductal stage or preductal position or postductal position. If we have here a narrowing within the aorta, in this case, in the right arm, we have a higher uh, blood pressure compared to the lower extremities. Also here you can see another malformation when the right subclavian artery uh, here uh, you see the right subclavian artery is originated from the aorta because the seventh intersegmental artery and the connection is not closed. That's why what we can see in the cadaver that the right subclavian will originate from that part of the aorta which is after the left subclavian artery and it is going behind the trachea and the esophagus. And we have also the same problem when we have a normal development of the subclavian artery, but this connection between the dorsal aorta won't disappear. So that's why we have a double aortic arch, what you can see here. It means that these vessels, they form a ring around the esophagus and trachea, and that's why they will form the respiratory and swallowing problems uh, for the patient. And finally, what you can see here, we have a problem with the development of the aortic arch. It is called the interrupted aortic arch. In this case, we have abnormal subclavian artery origin. We have a, a patent ductus arteriosus. Here you can see the connection between, between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. 
but only just the common carotid arteries will originate from the aorta. So this is a really severe developmental malformation. And only check just one word, the Marfan syndrome, which is a genetical disorder with the elastic fibers. Uh, I mentioned this disorder in my histo lecture in the first semester. Those patients, unfortunately, they have a lot of problems with the heart, with the uh, vessel too. So that's why we can mention this syndrome also if we are talking about the malformations of the arteries. And uh, finally, I would like to thank you for your attention.